The Ultimate Fighting Championship is as real as it gets. Inside the cage, the more chaotic it gets, the more unpredictable it gets, the better for us. But of course, there are limits to this. Limits to this sport that is built on savagery and no mercy. Today, we'll look at fighters who breached the code of conduct, so to say, and the hatred in each case was pretty justified. Mike Kyle Biting Wes Sims At UFC 47, during the dark ages of the company, Mike Kyle, a respected heavyweight prospect, made his debut. He was supposed to fight Tim Sylvia, but Sylvia failed the drug test. Yeah, even back then and Wes Sims was the guy to replace him. Did you guys know that Wes Sims was 6'10"? Yeah. The guy was huge, even for heavyweight, but Kyle dominated him, first in grappling, and then brutally knocked him out with just one second left in the first round. Dominant, near effortless win for the heavyweight prospect. But Wes Sims had something to say. There was a bite mark on his chest. Kyle had bit his opponent during the grappling, and when Joe Rogan asked Kyle to explain, this is what he said in response. Wes Sims has a mark on his chest where it looks like you bit him. He's a dirty bastard anyways, come on. All the shit he's done. The real surprise is, Mike Kyle was not immediately released from the promotion despite this being pretty inexcusable, but he was still kicked out eventually. Before we can unroll the next example, here's a bit of trivia. Mike Kyle was released from nearly every promotion he fought for. Igor Da Silva biting Andre Lima. Mike Kyle was not kicked out at once, but his successor, Igor Severino, was shown no mercy. Much like Kyle, Igor Severino was a prospect, and he made his debut against another prospect making his debut, Andre Lima. Both were Brazilians and quite promising, and the first round was entertaining, with a few warnings from the referee to Lima grabbing the fence. Towards the end, Lima landed a brutal elbow that rocked Igor and supposedly put him in autopilot. Then it happened. Second round. While they were clinching against the cage, Lima complained about something to the referee and it was much worse than a fence grab. Igor tried to bite the flesh off his arm, and seeing the rather gruesome bite mark, the referee called the fight off and gave the DQ victory to Andre Lima. Igor tried to explain himself later, stating that he was on autopilot and that that was not the fighter he was, but the UFC released him. The athletic commission withheld his purse, and to further punish him, Dana White awarded Andre Lima 50 Gs for the first and only bite of the night bonus. Paul Daly sucker punches Josh Koscheck. Koscheck's a dick. I don't get along with Koscheck at all. He is a forgotten heel in the UFC. Josh Koscheck. You know you are annoying when GSP of all people dislikes you. Looking back, yeah, Josh Koscheck was kind of grating on the nerves, but that's no reason to punch him outside of a legally sanctioned fight, as Paul Daly once did. Paul Daly. A popular name outside the UFC was once part of the top fight promotion, but his run didn't last long. In his third UFC fight, Daly faced Josh Koscheck, a welterweight contender, and there was drama as early as round one. Koscheck got grazed by a knee and acted like he was concussed, but he went on to control Daly with his wrestling, clearly winning a decision, but apparently, Daly was not done punching Koscheck in the face. The bell sounded, the fight was over, but Daly approached Koscheck and swung at him for some payback. Look at Dan Miragliata freaking out and ragdolling Daly. His reaction tells you a lot about the taboo Daly had committed. You just don't do that. In the press conference, Dana White fired Daly and promised that no matter what he accomplished outside, he would never be a part of the UFC again. On that incident, he's done. I don't give a shit if he's the best 170 pounder in the world, he'll never come back here again. We're talking Paul Daly. Yeah. You're cutting him from the UFC. Yeah. He'll never come back. The punch didn't even land, but the attempt alone cost Daly his UFC career. Michael Bisping spitting at Jorge Rivera's corner. Before Conor McGregor, there was Chael Sonnen and Michael Bisping. These two middleweights were the kings of trash talk and marketing a fight, but while Sonnen remained strictly professional, Bisping often took the fuse personally. At one point, Bisping was one of the more disliked fighters in the company, and this hatred stemmed from a rather gross incident with Jorge Rivera in his corner. Both fighters were talking, and it was a grudge match at UFC 127, but Bisping was clearly more pissed. In the first round, he was deducted one point for a bad knee to the face. Second round, Bisping got a TKO, but he was not done. After beating his rival, Bisping went over to the opposite corner and spat at Rivera's team, and then he called Rivera a closer and told him to go home. 
among other things, I'm sure. This outburst led to a lot of other middleweights wanting to humble Bisping, and while Bisping later apologized for his actions, he remained a hated figure at 185 for a very long time. Mike, no, Mike, apologize. No, Mike, uh, who's that? Israel Adesanya violating Paulo Costa. Paulo Costa tried to alpha Israel Adesanya every chance he got. Even before the undefeated champion and undefeated challenger were officially signed to a fight, Costa often made it known that Izzy was too weak and too skinny to compete with him. Straight up afraid even. Adesanya is afraid. He's afraid to fight against big guys, against powerful guys like Homer and me, John Jones. You know, he cut John Jones out to fight. Israel took it personally, and he wanted to make Paulo Costa an example. And that's fine and all. When someone tries to bully you, no matter how much secret you stay on, stand your ground. And that's exactly what Izzy did. He didn't get intimidated by Costa, and during the actual fight, he dominated the challenger. It was a masterful display of striking, a reminder of why Israel was so special. And after battering Costa in the first, Adesanya found the knock in the second. And then, well, can't say much. So let's just roll the clip. And just like that, Israel's incredibly motivating and inspiring message was marred. Israel had Paolo bloodied, beaten, and concussed, and decided it was a good idea to take the man's dignity live on pay-per-view. Poor Costa had no idea what had happened to him. The human trash did after a fight. I didn't see when I was there on the cage, but I saw now. I disapprove 100%. And to me, this is mortal now. Nobody will stop me. Kobe Covington in general. You know how the story goes. Kobe Covington was supposedly about to get cut due to his boring fighting style. And so he had to alter his personality. As per Kobe, he just dialed his regular personality up to 11. And that resulted in a lot of trash talk and misery for the other welterweights. To hype a fight, Kobe would say anything, calling his opponent a bum virgin. But then there are times he goes a little too far. Make sure to learn from the good buddy, Matt Hughes. You stay off the tracks when the train's coming through, Junior. Don't matter if it's a Trump train or the Kobe train. Get out the way! Just for the record, Matt Hughes was permanently crippled in the accident. But Kobe still said that after the fight was over. But you know the guy. And you know he takes everything one step further. And he has done this twice. I'm surprised that Usman was able to stay calm and laugh it off. But Leon got pissed. Understandably so. And then threw a water bottle at him. That's not building a fight, that's just plain nastiness. And since Kobe went on to lose both, got his jaw broken by Usman, and soundly defeated by Leon, safe to say karma was at work. You know it's out of line when the paragon of humanity, Dana Frederick White, disapproves of your money-making ways. That I really don't like is family. When you start going after family and, and uh, whether it's the kids, the wife, the parents, the whatever, it's just, it's just, such, a, it's just such a nasty thing to do. Ian Gary versus Neil Magny. Before UFC 292, no one really minded Ian Gary. He tried to emulate Connor from time to time, but he was not overly disrespectful or annoying. But Gary did something not even Connor could do completely turned the MMA world against him. His UFC 292 opponent was Neil Magny, traditional veteran versus prospect. And when asked about Ian Gary, Magny said something like, I want to say, B, I'm going to spank that ass. It literally looked like a dad taking, the t like, taking to his son. That's what it's going to look like. And like, it kind of excites me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, it's one of those things like uh, everyone's only as good as the last one. But Gary latched onto that little bit and just didn't stop. The entire press conference was him screaming over Magny and telling him to reflect on what he had said. It got tiresome real quick. And of course, Gary dominated the fight. But when it was all over and it was time to bury the hatchet, and maybe even apologize, this guy flipped off an already defeated Neil Magny and claimed that what he did was justice. There are ways to build a fight, but this was not building a fight. The character assassination of Magny from Ian Gary solely to build the fight led to real life problems for the UFC veteran. But if you ask Ian Gary even today, he'll stick to his word and call it karma. That's how you self-destruct your image in a week. Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. Being a nice guy to Dustin Poirier in the rematch led to a loss. And so for the trilogy, Conor McGregor decided to revert his old ways. Ruthless psychological warfare. 
It worked against Poirier back in 2014. Connor got in his head. But this time around, the Irishman wanted to go through his head. Yeah, I take it back. That wasn't psychological warfare, but pure psycho rage. From the very start, Connor said he wanted Dustin dead, a corpse to be stretchered out of the octagon. Tomorrow, no, you ain't gonna make this man pay with his life. I know he mean it. You're dead in that octagon tomorrow night. Mystic Mac predicted the first ever death inside the octagon, and you could tell that Dustin was low-key disturbed by these comments. Regardless, he remained cool, and we all know the end result. Connor broke his foot, and Dustin was declared the winner. But Connor, sitting on the canvas with a broken foot, was not done. While Bruce Buffer was announcing the result, Connor was promising his bitter rival that he and his family were going to die. McGregor was unhinged throughout, and I think the loss and the pain of a broken foot just pushed him off the edge. It was one of the darker builds up for a fight, and just as uncomfortable. As Dustin said in the aftermath, you just don't go there.